be among us in this moment, for we have lost a son, a father, a friend, and a partner, Officer William Billy Evans. And we need the strength of your everlasting arms and the comfort of your Holy Spirit to abide with us in our grief. We pray that you would speak into our pain. Allow us to hear your tender voice in the words spoken, the tributes offered, and the prayers lifted in Billy's honor. Soothe our sorrow with the indelible memories of good times shared with him, evidence of the blessings of a life well-lived and well-loved. Shine your light into the gloom of death's shadow. May it shed courage and consolation upon Officer Evans' mother, Janice, his children, Logan and Abigail, and their mother, Shannon, in the sure and certain hope of the eternity that you have promised. We commend then this service to your will and your servant, William, to your keeping. In your strong and holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Charles E. Schumer, Majority Leader of the United States Senate. To the family, my colleagues, the members of our great Capitol Police Force. Capitol Police officers are approached by hundreds of lost tourists a day. If you were one of the lucky ones, you'd bump into Officer Billy Evans. Excuse me, they'd say. Can I ask a question? Billy would flash his wide smile, eyes full of mirth, and say, but you already did. To know Billy Evans was to know, to borrow from Shakespeare, a fellow of infinite jest. His childhood friends will tell you that Billy capitalized literally on every opportunity for a joke. His college crew, as he called them, would add that he could be a prankster. His bowling crew and his band crew would say just the same. And Billy was a man of many crews. The guy you'd ask to sit shotgun on a long road trip, the one you'd want to be stationed with on a lazy summer day at the North Barricade, the first pick for an afternoon of Legos and lightsaber duels. Of course, not all of Billy's jokes were winners. He had his share of bad dad jokes. Some were just random. If a fellow officer asked Billy what he was up to, he'd be liable to reply, just thinking about my ideal weight if I was eight feet tall. A fellow of infinite jest, who wrung joy and laughter out of life's smallest moments. Returning to that lost tourist for a moment, of course, Officer Evans wouldn't leave the poor guy hanging. Now let me ask, ask you a question, he'd say. How can I help? summing up his life's mission in those four simple words. How can I help? How can I help my country? Join the Capitol Police Force. How can I help my colleagues? Volunteer to join the First Responders Unit. And on an unseasonably cold day in early April, that innate impulse to ask, how can I help, had Billy running towards danger. A reflex, as natural and as automatic as breath, to put the safety and happiness of others before his own. We are all shocked by the senselessness of this loss. To his sister Julie, his mother Janice, who I was able to speak with last week, to Shannon, my heart breaks for you. It does. To Billy's beloved children, Logan, Abigail, 
I want you to know that we are forever indebted to your dad. We will remember his sacrifice and your sacrifice forever. And to Billy's friends on the Capitol Police Force, these past few months have been devastating. Just as, as the scars of January 6th had begun to heal, another wound had opened. I say to you now, our dear Capitol Police Force who protect us, there is no shame in grief and sorrow and shock. We grieve with you. We feel that shock and sorrow with you. And we will heal together with you. To everyone else gathered here, I have two things to ask of you. First, if you see an officer today, be like Billy and ask yourself, how can I help? Be like Billy and be a comfort to all of all who are lost, to all who continue to recover from wounds, seen and unseen, in the wake of these tragedies. And second, second, I'd ask all of you to keep his memory alive. In the Jewish faith, we say, may their memory be a blessing. A blessing is something we remember and share and speak aloud. Those of you who remember Billy need to speak his name, tell his stories, tell his jokes, even the bad ones, especially the bad ones, to keep his memory alive. To make sure his young children grow up knowing their dad and remembering him as the hero and loving father he was. Today, we are hollow with loss, but one day, Billy's memory will feel like a blessing. If, through all of life's tragedies, Billy could search every moment for that spark of joy, so can we. Rest in peace, William. May your memory be a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Mr. President, members of Billy's family, including the members of the Capitol Police who are here, it is my official and sad honor to welcome you as well as Billy's many friends, colleagues, and loved ones uh, to the Capitol to honor his life. This observance is elevated by the presence of the members of the Capitol Police, leaders from the District of Columbia, including Mayor Bowser and the Metropolitan Police Department, and we thank you for your service, members of the administration, the Attorney General, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and the President of the United States. We all acknowledge Officer Evans' Capitol Police family and thank them every chance we get. And we include in that recognition Officer Kenneth Shaber, an American hero. We acknowledge Christina. We thank Officer Craig Atkinson for his heroism here with his wife, Mary Julia, that the officers with whom Billy served at the North Barricade were sitting among his family today is a testament to the special bond Billy had with that force. Most importantly, we are blessed to be with Officer Evans' family, his mother Janice, his children Logan and Abigail, and their mother Shannon and sister Julia. Thank you for giving Congress the honor of paying tribute to Billy Evans today. Officer Evans joins a pantheon of heroes 
who have given their lives to defend this Capitol, including on January 6th. Brian Sicknick, Howard Liebengood, Jeffrey Smith, also Christopher Enney, Clinton Holtz, Jacob Chestnut, and John Gibson some years ago. As we promise to remember, we carry them in our hearts forever. Twice in two months have many of us been brought together here in the Capitol Rotunda, united in grief to mourn the life and loss of heroes in uniform. Just months after the January 6th assault on our democracy, the men and women of the Capitol Police were again called to duty. On April 2nd, Officer Evans answered that call in giving his life to protect the Capitol and our country. He became a martyr for our democracy. Officer Evans, a Catholic, was killed on Good Friday, the saddest day of the year for many people of faith. His sacrifice recalls scripture. Greater love has no one that this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Officer Billy Evans was a hero whose life was distinguished by dedication to our country, including 18 years on the Capitol Police Force. He represented the best of public service, selflessness, sacrifice, and sheer courage in the face of the threat to our nation. When people spoke of Officer Evans, they said things like, he loved being a Capitol Police officer more than anyone could really say. And he carried the badge everywhere. He was just so proud. But what Billy was most proud of was his family. His absolute devotion to his family was legendary. When I spoke to Janice's mother following the tragedy, I asked how she was doing, and she said, my concern is for the children, for Logan and for Abigail. I hope it is a comfort to Logan and Abigail. I see they have their cozies with them there, but I hope it is also a comfort to them that their father, an American hero, is lying where Abraham Lincoln lay, on a catapult built for Abraham Lincoln. Many of us have heard Billy's friends talk about his favorite part of the day was returning home from work to see his children's faces light up with joy. How Billy loved sharing with them his love for sports, particularly Boston sports. How he made each day an adventure, whether play fighting with lightsabers, as the leader mentioned, uh, building cities of Legos and enjoying the magic of Harry Potter series. Okay. Everyone who knew Billy knew that he was a hero on the Capitol Police Force and in his family. It is our hope that with this tribute, the American people too will know and remember the truth. Logan and Abigail, no words are adequate. We can only imagine your sadness, but we hope it's a comfort to you that so many now know about your dad and know that he is a hero, that his, names will all, his name will always be on our lips and his memory in our hearts. And that the President of the United States is picking up one of your distractions from <laughs> Greater compliment as no one have than the President of the United States <laughs> looking after your toys. And that so many, many, many mourn your loss and pray for you, including the President of the United States here today to offer words of tribute to Billy. We also hope that this tribute is a comfort to members of the Capitol Police Force who have endured an horrific and heartbreaking several months. As we grieve this passing of Officer Evans and all who have given their lives to defend the Capitol and the country, we're moved by the courage, grace, and resilience with which each member of the force has met this moment and continues to serve our nation. Thank you. May God bless the United States Capitol Police Force and all who work to keep our nation safe. And may God bless America. Thank you to the family of Billy Evans 
for giving us this honor to pay tribute to a true American hero. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Joseph R. Biden, Jr., President of the United States. Madam Speaker, Majority Leader Schumer, Minority Leader McCarthy, my friend Minority Leader McConnell, members of Congress, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Milley, Attorney General Garland, Mayor Bowser, all the Capitol Hill Police and all that uh, are here to pay tribute to this Capitol policeman who fell on the line of duty. Acting Chief uh, Pittman and the men and women of the Capitol Police Force, I'm sorry, the second time in two months we have such a ceremony. And, uh, you know, uh, Mom, I didn't know Billy, but I knew Billy. I grew up with Billy's in Claymont and Scranton, Pennsylvania. Billy was always the kid that, you know, if you got in a fight, you're outnumbered three to one, he'd still jump in, knowing you'd both get beaten. He was the one who uh, always kept his word. If he said he'd be there, he'd be there. He was the one who, uh, who just like folks I grew up with wasn't capable of saying no when you needed it. You know, uh, just like uh, you, Officer Kenny Sherber was injured in the attack with Billy. And uh, never has there been more strain, and I've been here a long time, I've been here since 1972 as a U.S. Senator, 73. And so much strain and responsibility have been placed on the soldiers, the soldiers of the Capitol Police. And yet you hear it, you see it, you watch them, and you watch them do their duty with pure courage and not complain. You know, uh, Sergeant Kyle King, I'm sorry you had to make the call, that telephone call that every family dreads when they have a son or daughter, husband, wife, brother, sister in uniform. Every morning they pin that badge on, go to work. They expect to come home in the back of your minds will ever get that call. You knew Billy since grade school. I think it was in fourth grade. Now I got to deal with all the guys that I grew up in doing fourth grade. When one passes away, the other one has to give up because has too much information about you, too much to leave behind. But you know, I'm sure all those memories from North Adams and Clarksburg never changed uh, who Billy was. He was defined by his dignity, his decency, his loyalty, and his courage. And mom, that's because of you and his dad. That's how it happened, not by accident. Ms. Evans, you have, I have some idea 
what you're feeling like. I buried two of my children. And people have come up to you and are going to come up to you for some time and say, I know how you feel. They're going to say that to sis. They're going to say that to the kids. They're going to say that to his former wife. And after a while, you know everybody means well. You feel like saying, you have no idea. But the truth is that the time's going to come, I promise you. Not believable now. When a memory, a fragrance, a scene, a circumstance, the way his son tilts his head the way he did when he was that age. It's going to bring back the memory. And uh, for the longest time, it's going to feel like, at that moment, that memory, it's going to feel like you got the phone call just that moment ago. And they're going to be people celebrating Billy's life. And as much as you appreciate it, all of you, it also is hard. You relive everything again. And you know, I, uh, I got a phone call when I first got here and lost my family, part of my family, from a person I never knew, never met former governor of New Jersey, who was literally uh, 40, uh, 45 years my senior. And he told me he knew how I felt. And I didn't say anything. He said, I know what you're thinking. He said, but I did know. He said, I used to come home. I was the attorney general of New Jersey before I was governor. And I'd come home for lunch because I lived just across the green from my office. And one day, a woman who helped out at our home came running across the green saying, she's gone, she's gone. His wife had had an aneurysm. He said, you know what I did? He said, I kept a, I kept a, I got graph paper. And four months out, I put the month on it, and then a horizontal line, I put the date of the month. In the vertical line, I put the number is 1 to 10. 10 would be the happiest day of my life, and 1 would be like I, the moment I got the phone call. And he said, uh, and every night before I go to bed, I'd graph it. I'd put a dot on that day where I was. And he said, don't look at it for three or four months. He said, you'll look at it, and you'll see. He put it on a graph. Graphs. The downs are just as far down but they get further and further and further apart. That you're all going to know that you're going to make it by holding each other together, most importantly, by holding Logan and Abigail as tightly as you can. Because as long as you have them, you've got Billy. As long as you have them, you know, uh, my prayer for all of you is that uh, the day will come when you have that memory. And I said, just smile before you bring a tear to your eyes. It's, I promise you it's going to come. It just takes a while. It takes a while. But when it comes, you'll know because he's still with you. He's still in your heart. Losing a son, daughter, brother, sister, mom, dad, it's like uh, losing a piece of your soul. But it's buried deep, but it comes back. There's a great quote by R.G. Ingersoll. It was read when my son, who was the chief law enforcement officer in the state of Delaware, the attorney general, 
came back from Iraq after a year and he, and he died. And they read this poem from R.G. Ingersoll, who said, when will defies fear, when duty throws the gauntlet down to fate, when honor scorns compromise with death. This is heroism. Your son, your husband, your brother, your dad was a hero. And he's part of you. It's in your blood. My prayer for you is that moment of the smile comes before the tear, quicker than longer. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. Army Chorus Quartet. I will 
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction. 
Delivered by Senate Chaplain Barry C. Black. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for your amazing grace. As we face the painful human reality of death, we thank you in the midst of our grief for the courageous life and legacy of Officer William Evans. May his ultimate sacrifice inspire us to be more vigilant in protecting our freedoms. Continue to comfort his precious family. Continue to restore to health Officer Ken Shaver. O oh Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a holy rest and peace at last. We pray in your sovereign name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain at your seats until escorted to pay your respects by the sergeants at arms staff. <laughs> 